2018 was a very good year for healthcare uh, overall. A lot of innovation, a lot of good things happening. There were a lot of fears around May of this year when people were talking about price controls, all kinds of harsh actions against the industry. And then, of course, the midterms were another source of anxiety. As it turned out, uh, things are pretty stable and the industry is moving along beautifully. In fact, in 2018, we've seen certain things happen that are going to make 2019 very good. This has been the best year ever for innovation flow in the whole industry, especially in the quality of new molecular entities that have been approved by the FDA in this year. It's amazing. And the new modalities that are being used to bring new things out is amazing. So 2019 looks like a very robust situation. It is a defensive sector to begin with. So there are some financial factors at work, but the fundamentals are very good. You've got demand growing year after year. Every year, 10 million boomers come into the area when they need a lot of medicines. And then, of course, tremendous innovation flow next year. David, what about the uh, threat of uh, political uh, action getting in the way of those positives that Fred just outlined? Well, with the Democrats uh, coming into power in the House, I mean, there was definitely the possibility of a headline risk uh, from, uh, you know, the, the efforts to control drug price increases, whether it's Part D, Part B. Uh, what we do is we look at um, companies that can grow the top line in earnings through innovation, through new product launches, and volume growth. And I, I want to point out that I cover uh, more than just the uh, pharma sector. I cover medical devices and some healthcare service stocks. In the yeah. devices sector, uh, you, you see companies that can grow earnings and revenue and expand margins, even in the face of uh, declining year-over-year -year prices. It's interesting, David, that you're picking some of the winners. I mean, if you look in this group, some of these stocks have been beaten down so hard. I, I just happen to be looking at Allergan, which is more than 30% off its highs because we have Brent Saunders. He comes on the show pretty regularly. They had a pretty good year as far as the overall business, raised their outlook. And yes, there, there were hiccups when it, when it comes to breast implants in Europe, but I think that was only 1% of their total revenues. Why is a stock like that down so much? Is it indicative of the overall market? And, and why would you not step in to buy some of the more beaten down names like that? Well, with Allergan, uh, you know, I think it's been a mixed picture. Uh, you've got uh, possible competition for in the aesthetics area. Um, you've got possible competition for Botox. You definitely have competition in the eye care space. Um, there's competition for uh, Restasis. Uh, so you've got a couple of headwinds there that the market is assessing. The, um, you know, if you go back um, to 2016 when they completed the deal, to divest their genetics, uh, generics business, and they had you know, brought in $35 billion in cash, and you look at what they acquired um, to boost their, their, their pipeline, and it's been a mixed picture on um, what they've acquired. I think the market views that as like, you're wondering, like, you know, is, are they really going to find something that can uh, grow revenue going forward and uh, provide some diversification um, if you've got the uh, headwinds of the Restasis competition. Fred, do you expect there to be more M&A and consolidation within the healthcare space next year, and which subsectors in particular? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I'm a little surprised that there was not more M&A this year with the tax reform coming along. Uh, one expected uh, maybe a more, more M&A and fewer buybacks, but in fact, there were a lot of buybacks and not that much uh, M&A. Uh, next year, I do believe there'll be M&A in uh, the, the usual M&A with the smaller companies being bought by the larger companies, but the, also among the larger companies, there might be some horizontal consolidations. There is a little overcapacity in the sector. Just look at the number of cancer projects in the system, immuno-oncology projects in the system, over 100. Uh, and it's just not sustainable to have so much overcapacity there will be consolidation next year. Do you have any names for us, David, as far as what you're watching on that front and whether which stocks could be a buy on that idea? Sure. Um, the two names that are beaten down that we really like are United Health Group and um, Medtronic. You know, United Health 
is a very large insurance company, health insurance. They also have um, operations in Optum, Optum RX, Optum Insight. Uh, the Optum part is growing faster than the insurance part. Uh, you've got uh, the, the PBM that's uh, gr uh, growing market share. You've got um, a data and analytical uh, business that's just doing great. You've got a consulting business. Um, you've got a care delivery business in there. So Optum has been a huge growth driver uh, for United. Um, and within United, you know, they, with they, they are uh, United Healthcare, the, the insurance part. Uh, they're doing very well in Medicare, Medicaid. As for, as for Medtronic, um, Fred talked about uh, demographics of the aging population. Medtronic uh, makes medical devices that treat people uh, with aging-related conditions, cardiovascular conditions. Um, they do very, very well overseas. Uh, there, you know, there, there's growth and, and the, um, you know, the, whether it's pain management mm -hmm. or whether, it, uh, and Medtronic is also acquiring a robotics company um, for their spinal implants. And that's a, you know, a, a real big leap forward in technology. And that's really where uh, the interventional uh, space is headed.